Oh, hey there, fellow wackadoos. Hello again. Welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Q Basic Asylum. Uh, looks like we're episode, what, uh, QBA 27? Yeah, to print the impossible print. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I know, I know you're thinking because I hear it. And I hear the, the the wheels turning and the thoughts and the, the voice. Or, or is that you, the voices or is that you? Anyway, someone is wondering, print the impossible print? What the hell is this damn fool talking about this time? Well, anyway, we'll find out what we're talking about this time. Uh, hang on a second, right over here. Wait, wait, right here. I said here. Yeah, see, right there. Hang on, here we go. All right, so now, as you see, we've got QBA 27.base up. This is, uh, I call it BIOS print uh, by Dr. Doodle, copyleft 2024. And uh, well, before we get into this, let's just see what this thing does. So, for example, okay, we got down here. Mm, 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 okay, here is... We've all seen this, the, the ASCII chart here of ASCII characters and such. If you want to print five or six or seven, you just type those in, no big deal. Uh, you want to print, well, or one of these characters here, like this thing here, this Omega, whatever. Well, there's no key for Omega, so we just copy this, paste it in, print it that way. Or you just, like you say, use the numbers. Uh, look, we got number one here, print character one. We got the little happy space. We've seen him, in fact, we use him in the derp of the dude. That's actually the dude. Or that's the dude. I don't know which. But in any case, so we just either we 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 type the the number letter in that we want to print, or we print character one two three etc. Or we copy straight from here and put it in that. Nope. Well, let's just try this here. Okay. So we start out. We initialize a program. I use def int a through z to turn all our variables into integer by default. Pretty standard. Now we declare sub BIOS print, that's what does the magic, and we'll see that in a moment, uh, with a parameter of C, that's the character that you want to print. And if you notice this program attempts to print characters using BIOS interrupt 10. The purpose of this is to allow QBasic to print control characters. What are we talking about? Well, start out here, we'll clear the screen, and now we're going to print see little happy face. We actually copied from the, the ASCII chart, put them right in there, or print character 1. Either way, we should. Let's run this, and what do we get? Boom, there he is, little happy man there, both a couple times there. Either way, we've got Mr. Happy Man. So, let's try something. Instead of Happy Man here, let's print a uh, character, oh, I don't know, 13. Try this. Do this again. Boop. Oh, wait a minute. We got the one, but not the other. Why did only one print? Let's try character 12, for example. What are these, by the way? Uh, character 13. That's, uh, well, that's just a space. Character 12 looks like a, an onk or something. I don't know. But we'll put character 12. What do we get? Run and boom. What? Now we get nothing. What? What's going on here? Well, let's take a look at these first characters again here. And boom, 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 boom. if you notice... These first, what are they? Here, get to scroll down. There we go. If you notice, the first, what is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, 31 characters. All have these little squibbles after them. What, what does that mean? Well, these first 31 characters are called control characters, and they literally control the screen. Back before uh, QBasic and other uh, higher level programming languages, in fact, before displays, when you just had a platter brrr, typing the things out. Well, for example, uh, null, this one, zero, zero is null, just means nothing. Um, I'm not sure what all these mean, but bell, for example, character seven, it says bell. What that means, when you try and print character seven, it will literally beep the, the printer, the, the, the platter that you got. So you want the, the uh, let's say you want the plotter to plot out a line of text and then beep. You put your text, you put character seven, prints it out, beep, there you go. Uh, character nine, tab, we've all seen tab, it goes over the next column. So instead of char printing character nine, it would actually tab, boop, move it over. Uh, VT, that's vertical tab. Uh, LF is line feed. You've seen 10 and 13, line feed and carriage return. So these are all characters. These two don't have actual images associated with them. But with older systems, before DOS and before uh, computer screens and all this, when you had printers only, when you had plotters, these things are actually control. Again, the 7 would make it beep. Uh, there was a line feed. There's a carriage return. Um, I'm not sure. Act. I know where did I see act. There's acknowledge, like you would send and then acknowledge it received it. Uh, decrement, decrement. Uh, again, oh, EOF, that's end of file. Escape. We've all seen the escape here, the top, top, top left corner. But these first 31 characters has special meaning to older systems. These days, we pretty much can ignore all that stuff because we're well past the plotter and the printer stage. But they, they still exist and they still have that meaning. So, let's say, for example, we want to print, um, well, 
character 11. Let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's put in here 11. And in fact, we'll copy it because sometimes, as you know, we, we don't have a key for that character, so we'll copy it like so. Edit, copy, and up here. There we go. Edit, paste. Good, get rid of this. And we'll run this, see what we get. Nothing. It didn't print it at all. Whether we paste it directly or whether we print character 11, we get nothing. It, it's not going to work. And furthermore, how does how does QBasic show these if we can't print them? Well, that's where DOS, or more precisely, BIOS comes in. So what's going on here? What's what's happening? Well, let's take a look at our code and see what we're doing here. Uh, again, with QBA 27.base BIOS print by Dr. Doodle Copy Left 2024. Now, we initialize our program and then we set def int A through Z. That means, of course, our variables are, are integer by default. We declare our sub procedure BIOS print C. The C is the character that you want to print, and we'll take a look at that later. That's what does the heavy lifting for us. This program attempts to print characters using BIOS interrupt 10, and the purpose of this is to allow QBase to print control characters. Now, these are the characters we couldn't normally print because they are control characters. So we look at our main program loop, we set the color to 14, yellow, clear the screen, locate 2 and 1, and we print. Now, we go to a loop. For Z equals 0 to 8, print character Z. Next Z, for Z equals 14 to 32, print character Z. Next Z, then we set to color 13, and we print this, character print. Now we print missing characters. What's happening? <coughs> well, we're going from 0 to, to 8, to print the first eight control characters using print control and then their uh, character excuse me print character there's the the z value there so the first time through it's character one which is the sm hot smiley face there next time two character two which is the white smiley face and around 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 the hearts the the diamonds etc all that so we try and print all these things using the the, the chr statement and we see we we end up with these missing now go let run this here and boop Let's see, there it is. See, we use the CHR method uh, to print these characters, and we end up missing characters 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All these different characters just don't print because they're control characters. Now, what happens when we copy and paste? All right, we'll try that. So we've copied and pasted them manually into the code, and most of it's there, but look, this one's here. So we're missing all the same, but we're also missing character 30, that little right hand carrot uh, arrow excuse me so almost as good but not quite the same and then finally we use bios print boop look at that everything prints up uh what's uh, look like for example the uh, this dot right here we see we don't see it up here uh these two characters where these characters come from what's that one Wh what's happening here well again bios print it prints all the 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 control characters because it doesn't use dos Hold on, I'll try and explain this here in a second. What's that going? What's happening there? We'll see in a moment. Okay, so here we are. The first we went through when we printed all those the characters that we could using the CHR command. Next section here, this is the second line where we print. We see we copied them directly into the code, and some printed, some didn't. And so we're, we're missing these characters. Then finally we go to our sub-procedure, BIOS print Z. First we print a blank line to separate them. Now for Z equals 0 to 32, so the first 32 characters, 33 actually, including 0. We look, locate 7, that 7 rows down, and with Z plus 1, because if we try to print 0, well, it can't print 0 over here, it has to be at least the first column. So Z plus 1, BIOS print Z, and now the first time through it's 0, which is just null, it's going to print nothing. Next time through, Z is now 1, so this here we're printing one character over, and BIOS print character 1, which is a smiley face. Next time around, we're 2, so 2 spaces over, BIOS print 2 which is the, the, the white smiley face or the, the filled smiley face I should say and just around 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 till we do all 33 characters now we print BIOS print the text print missing characters zero zip zilch nada we didn't miss any okay and then finally come down to this section here clear screen locate 10 11 print that character what was that that was that run that there where does that come from if you look in our ASCII code or ASCII chart 
it's not there. It's character 13. It doesn't even have a character in the chart. But when you use BIOS print, it'll print that character, like a, a quarter note and an eighth note, I guess, with the flag. So let's take a look. View, subs, BIOS print. All right, and here we go. This is a sub procedure that prints the special characters using BIOS interrupt 10. Now, what is this all about? Well, if you remember back when we were uh, using the mouse, I had created the sub procedure, yeah, sub procedure to use the mouse. It had all these poke commands and then call absolute. What that is, that is uh, machine code. It's literally a binary code that you poke manually into locations in memory, starting at location 100, 101, 102, 103, etc. You poke all this binary data in, then you call absolute. In other words, you're calling this section of memory absolute as machine code. It runs the whole section of memory as a single machine command, if you will. Now the mouse uses DOS interrupt 33 for the mouse, but this uses BIOS, which is the basic input output system. If you've never heard of BIOS, BIOS is to DOS what DOS is to Windows. In other words, the, the, the disk operating system, when we're running QBasic or Windows or whatever, we use DOS to do things like uh, find files and open files, close files, manage memory, stuff like that. It's the disk operating system. Now, before we had an actual DOS, we had BIOS, which is the basic input output system. And it is accessed using interrupt 10. Don't worry about the technicality of all this, but uh, if you're interested, in fact, if you want to see how I derived all these, these characters and things, stick around after the video and I'll show you all about that. But in any case, we uh, declare our sub BIOS print and then see that's the character that we want to print. So poke 100, that's uh, hex B4, and then 101 is hex HA, uh, A, excuse me. 102 is hex B0, 103 is C. So for example, if we want to print character one, we'd, print, we'd use BIOS print one, and that would poke it in there, one or two or three, whatever character we want to print. Then we fill in the rest of the, the binary code and call absolute 100, boom, it prints our character. So that's about all there is for the code. Not No big uh, game program or, or uh, utility sum. It's just basically this, this sub procedure here that prints using BIOS in order to print control, control characters. These things here. All the stuff that the, the the line feed, the tab, the the things that they have, or for example, the left and right uh, arrows I guess they are those don't print that kind of thing so now uh, that covers the code let me just run through here quick once again we start here def int a through z to set all our variables to integer by default we declare our sub procedure bios print which we just saw c is the character that we want to print now we come down to the main loop set color to 14 clear the screen locate two, two rows down in the first uh, column and we print now for z equals 0 to 8. So we're printing the first 8, 9 actually, 0 to 8 is 9 characters using uh, the, the CHR function, print the, the z. So the first time through, this is 0. So print 0, which is null. It really is nothing. That is nothing. And then we come through, z is now 1. And so we print character 1, which is the smiley face. Next, z, and it's now 2. So we print character 2, which is that filled smiley face, etc., etc. The hearts, the diamonds, all of that. Now for z equals 14 to 32. And we print character again, 14, 15, 16. Next, z. Now we set to color 13, as you saw earlier. We'll run this again. You can see... Yeah, you color 14, print all the, the control characters as best we could, just using the, the CHR command. And here's the ones that are missing because we couldn't print them. Now, when we did, when we copied, physically copied it, we got everything in there except this left-hand arrow right here. That wouldn't print for whatever reason. But when we use BIOS print, all of this prints. So, there's the first section using the, the CHR function. Uh, we'll come down here. Here's the second section where we just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, and most of it printed, but a few things didn't. Then finally, this section here, 
using BIOS print, we start with zero all the way up to 32, and we locate seven Z plus one, just so it's one space over each time. A BIOS print Z, and first, for the first time through, Z is zero, that's null, prints nothing. Next time through, next Z, it's one, so Z plus one, so we move over one space, BIOS print character one. Next time through, it's two, move over another space, and BIOS print character 2, character 3, etc. Now we print this BIOS print, that's the message on screen, and missing character zip, zilch, nada. Next we come down here, and this you can just disregard, clear screen, locate, uh, print, uh, there, yeah, see this we print the question mark, now locate 1010, BIOS print 13, that is that character that, as I said, that's character 13, and in the chart, it doesn't even have a character. But using BIOS print, you can print that little 16th note. So, uh, I'm sure you're as confused as I am right now, but the whole point is that using QBasic, you cannot print these these characters, well, some of them you can, the smiley face, but the tab, the uh, line screen, line feed, uh, the vertical tab, the bell the character won't print because they are control characters. They're used to control plotter at old time. You remember the, the printers with the tractor feed like that? Before graphics even. So that's why I created View Subs BIOS Print. And again, it's pretty simple really. It just takes the one parameter C, which is the character that you want to print. We poke uh, the binary numbers into the lo memory location starting at 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. Uh, location 103 is the actual parameter we put in there, character 1 or character 2, character 3, etc. We put, poke all this binary in, uh, data in here and then we call absolute starting at 100 up here. It's, it calls the routine and returns you back to your program. Simple as that. Now then, that about covers the code. And it's time for superiors, as I mentioned earlier, a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Fielding. Brilliant guy, uh, but uh, yeah, he's, he'll love this. He's got some great things. So we'll take a look at that, come back, and then we'll take, maybe if you're still interested, take a leak, look into how I came up, take a leak, take a look into how I came up with all this stuff. Hang on one second. Here we go. Superiors! All right, well, well, here we are at the uh, YouTube page of Jeremy Fielding, as I said, and uh, this guy, wow, it's just incredible. Now, he's got some newer stuff I haven't really taken a look at yet, but uh, I just saw one that's very cool, built a, a desk theme for Doctor Who, if you love Doctor Who like I do. Where's the one I saw earlier that was really cool? Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, this, well, I guess this is uh, actually uh, part two, so there's a series of... Uh, this one here is part two of the speed control for motors. Here's what kind of motor do I have. So you can see there's like, oh, uh, single phase, three phase, uh, induction or, or, or uh, permanent ma magnet, universal motors, all different types of motors and things. Here he built this uh, bandsaw of his own out of wood and using some of the motors he got from whatever the equipment he's, he's scra scavenged. How to make gears without CNC. What is this one? Make a wooden clock. That's cool. So, I mean, it's not just motors. He's, uh, here's what's inside a printer. All kinds of interesting things. Uh, more about the twin motor. But another thing that I got a kick out of. Oh, here's five things made with a treadmill. I mentioned earlier he used a treadmill for a couple of projects. But there's also, where's the one that I saw? Oh, cool. An electric uh, go-kart. Where is the one that was, uh, well, there's a couple, I guess, he did about the so-called um, free energy units. Uh, where's the one that, like, a breeder reactor, things like that. And he's ch testing them out. He takes these designs, people come up with, oh, it's free energy. And he tests them out, see whether they work. What is this one? This device helps planes fly without fuel. <laughs> I guess that'd be pretty handy, huh? Uh, making carbon fiber. Cool. Check, have to check that one out. Uh, oh, look at this. This car here it looks like the whole car bends china's hardest engineering problem is it even possible robotics he's good does a lot with robotics uh how much power can this generate look at this one i saw this title earlier i have to take a look why the u.s military spends millions reverse engineering engineering their own planes what is that all about yeah, it, Jeremy Fielding. This oh, this one was cool. I just saw this a while ago. The, the Mechanum wheel. It's it's weird. It's the one 
uh, yeah, it's each of these little rollers roll independently so you can go sideways and everything else. Uh, how to turn this into that, how I made a robot part start to finish. He's got what, uh, oh, several hundred videos, I know that. How to make custom gears. Put a solar panel on a Tesla, which is an electric car, so of course the solar panel makes perfect sense for it. But just fascinating, the ingenious design of uh, aircraft planes, or aircraft tires, excuse me. Okay, here's the reviewing at free energy device. Yeah, how does it work? It just it, everything from motors and and different technologies and stuff, but also he has series. Where's the one series he has on on just basic uh, um, skills that engineers need? Uh, uh, mathematics and electrical or uh, mechanical design and such, and mechanical advantage. All this. If you're interested in all of tinkering and and tearing stuff apart, rebuilding it. What do they call it? Circuit bending now in uh, different different. Designs and such, you got to check out Jeremy Fielding. He's amazing videos and he's so thorough. And, and yeah, I mean, to tell you, <laughs> my videos, I won't lie, there's times I just I sound like gibberish. I don't know how to, but this man is crystal clear in his explanations. And wow, you learn so much watching his videos. I love his, his channel, I, I watch it all the time. What is this one here? He has a gun. Oh no, shots fired. Special effects can get you in trouble. I'll have to check that one out too. Very cool. You got to check out Jeremy Fielding. You will be entertained, educated, and just blown away. That's all I have to say. Jeremy Fielding is this um, channel here. It was engineering, I think. Jeremy Fielding, uh, Tinker, Tinker, Invent, and Teach, it says. But you got to check him out. He, he knows what he's doing, and he's, he's whatever he doesn't know what he's doing, you and he learn together. So it's very cool. Uh, he's got 132 videos. Very nice. Uh, something for everybody here. Got to check out Jeremy Fielding. So thank you, Jeremy, for your great work, and uh, what a terrific page you have. I love it, and I'm sure whoever comes here will love it as well. All right, back to the video. Let's see what we got here. All right, well, that should just about do it. Uh, hope you learned a thing or two, found something useful or, or at least interesting. Uh, yeah, we, we covered the code, we covered Jeremy Fielding. Got to check that page out. The man is amazing. Um, and and well, if you're interested in the, the assembly part of it, how I come up with all that, uh, stick around afterward. No, we're talk, going a little depth about that, but uh, not too much. Yeah, but before I go, I just wanted to want to thank everyone Sincerely for watching these uh, these crazy videos I subject us all to, uh, but uh, yeah, if you, if for whatever reason, enjoying this nonsense, well, stick around. I've got a bunch more coming, and uh, check out some of my other videos if if you like to, to punish yourself. But uh, yeah, I, I, who knows when I'll come up with the next one? But hopefully you'll be around to see it, and hopefully I will. Uh, I guess that'll do it. So for now, so uh, until next time, people. Hasta la pista, baby. All right, well, if you stuck around this long, I'll, I'm going to assume you're as big a dork as me. Me, me right here, me. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, so we're going to take a look at debug, which is what I use to uh, create the BIOS print function. And uh, uh, don't be frightened, it's right here, debug, boop. Now, if you've done any assembly program, I don't know everything. I just a little, enough to get myself in trouble. But using debug, uh, you can create your own program. For example, let's do uh, our let's look at the registers here. Now, you notice we got AX, BX, CX, DX, all these different. These are called registers. What they are, they're physical uh, locations in the processor, memory locations in hardware on the processor that you put variable. Uh, put information into values and then you do proceed uh, uh, call particular I'll show you what I mean this is all using DOS or in this case BIOS which is interrupt 10 so what we'll do we'll start assembling at uh, number 100 location 100 boom so it's asking for us command so I'll type in here let's see what it is here uh, move a h a what that means I'm moving a into the the AH or the high half of, of register AX. Now we move AH or AL, A low, 
put that one, that's number one, that's the, the character one that we want to print. Now we move CX uh, one, we want to print one character, and now we call interrupt, oh, interrupt 10, that's the BIOS interrupt, and finally uh, RETF return far, that should do it. Let's look at our registers here, R, okay, there we go. So we can see uh, our registers are all zero, AX, BX, CX, DX, these registers have zeros in them, no, no information. Now our first command here is move AH or A high A. So we'll hit proceed and go. Now if you look, AX now has the A in there. A high, the, the high half of AX now has the A in there because we used A, uh, move A high A. There it is. Next, move A low 1. So we'll hit proceed, go again. Now A low is 1. We put A, put A into A high. We put 1 into A low. Next command is move CX 1. So CX is currently 0, so we'll proceed. Boom. CX is now equal to 1. What we're doing, we're telling the, the, proceed, the processor that we want function A, which is to print a character. One is the character we want to print, that little smiley face. And now CX1, that's how many characters print. Finally, when we call interrupt 10, the BIOS interrupt will proceed and boom, there he is, little smiley face right there. So, uh, let's, let's U100 here. So here's our, our quick program here. We moved, starting at location 100, we moved A into A high, we moved one into A low, moved one into CX, called interrupt 10 and then return F, return far. So one, two, three, four, five functions, five commands that all it is. This is how we use interrupts in DOS and in BIOS. You put whatever, you put whatever uh, command you want to do into A high. Whatever other uh, parameter you need, like what character you want to print goes in A low. CX is how many. And then we call the interrupt and return far. There it is. Now if we dump Starting location 100. Now we di uh, we dump the section 100 where we started programming. And you notice these numbers here? Do they look familiar at all? These are the numbers that I put into the sub procedure BIOS print. In other words, uh, we would load uh, this function loads A into A high. This command here loads one into A low. This command loads one into CX. And then there's a just space because we don't need that for the moment. CD is call interrupt. 10 is the interrupt we're calling. And finally, CB is return far. So in other words, it returns from this the interrupt call. That's all there is. All Those numbers are all that I put into that command. And debug is how I found the numbers that we need to put in here. Now, you do need to know a little bit about assembly to do this. And I know just enough to get myself in trouble. But, uh, yeah, basically with assembly, you load parameters into registers on the, on the processor. You call an interrupt, either a BIOS interrupt, a DOS interrupt, what have you. And then you return back to your program. That's all there is. Boom. Uh, I guess that'll do it so, for now. So uh, until next time, people, I'll still have pista, baby.